Well, we stumbled across a delicacy today. Um, we came up with some bearded tooth or lion's mane mushrooms. My mom actually found some on this very tree last year and looks like they've come back this year. We may be a day or two late. They're getting a little bit old. They're uh, growing on an oak tree. They're growing on a dead limb off of it. We have found them several times off of a uh, old oak stumps. They seem to like oak, but These are not something you can have every day because they don't grow all the time, but they're kind of a cool delicacy. They, many people say that they taste like uh, lobster or crab meat, so they're a firmer but kind of delectable type mushroom. There's a group of ants that are actually coming out here and harvesting tiny little pieces of the mushrooms and taking them back to their home. That also makes me think we're a little bit late picking these, but I think they'll still be okay. It's best to harvest these when it's been dry for a while. If it's been raining recently, they get all waterlogged and uh, you almost have to wring water out of them to get them to cook properly and they, they tend to rot quicker after you pick them. Apparently there's some information out there that these are supposed to be good for brain health, for uh, various things, Alzheimer's being one of them. These typically come out, you'll find them in the late summer, early fall time period. Uh, so that's kind of a time period when a lot of mushrooms, a lot of the more commonly eaten mushrooms aren't out, so it's kind of nice to find them then. Mosquitoes bugging me. I'm gonna go ahead and pick these now. Uh, so I've got a sharp, thin knife. I'm going to attempt to slice them and leave the mycelium on the tree, kind of the roots of the mushroom. They, they're kind of stuck to the green part of the tree, but I don't think they're growing in that at all. They're only up here in the dead part of the tree, because that's what they're eating is ro rotten wood. This part here on this particular tree is still alive. And this limb or other tree that it grew around, I'm not sure which, is dead. I've got a mesh bag here. I'm going to put them in this. It's common practice to carry mushrooms in a mesh bag. That gives you the chance of spreading spores as you walk back to your house or your vehicle. And hopefully it propagates the mushrooms into new territory so you can find more next time. There's three mushrooms. They've got a pretty good heft to them. I'd say they're around a pound worth of mushrooms, maybe a little more. They're one of the meatier mushrooms. They're a bit solider cored. They're fluffy on the outside, of course, but the core is pretty solid, so you get quite a bit of mushroom per volume compared to many others. Jeremiah picked those lion's mane uh, mushrooms out there in the woods and I brought them back in the kitchen and I'm going to start working on them. They're fairly dirty and I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleaning on them. 
Well, as you saw, they were hanging on that tree, and there were quite a few ants crawling around them. Uh, I don't see any ants on them right here, so I guess we left them behind, but there's quite a bit of dirt on it. Uh, it's not a good idea to wash mushrooms because they act like sponges. So what I'm going to do is take this bottle brush and try to brush as much dirt off of it as I can just down onto the table. These little hair things are pretty delicate so I just soon not break too many of them but I'm brushing the little dirt, dirty pieces out of the hair and it's not really hair but it is called a lion's mane and a lion really has hair on its mane so I'll do that with all of these and then we'll go on to the next step. I brushed off quite a bit of little loose dirt. A little dirt doesn't scare me, but um, and then I'm going to trim off what I couldn't brush off. See this is kind of stained part, I think, maybe where it was touching the tree. So. I've got a knife that's slightly serrated, so I'm going to use that because I think a sawing motion could help me. I want to trim off as little as possible because I don't want to lose the mushroom. What I've learned from a little bit of research I've done is when they first start growing, they're pink. And you want to wait until they are white before you pick them. Some parts of these have gone a little past white and they're trying to turn a little bit yellow. But I think they're still okay. What I'm going to do is cut it across this way with all the little hair things over here and make fairly thin slices. Now I'm going to crack one egg in this bowl. Almost cracked it on the tape. Oh, this is what the fork was for. I'm going to stir that up. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this. Stir it. I like to fry fish and things I'm going to fry in corn flour. It gives it a little bit crispier texture but you don't have the big pieces like you do with cornmeal. Put a little bit of it in a bowl here. I don't think it'll take very much. All right, my next step would be to heat up some oil in my cast iron skillet. I don't need to show you that because probably you know what to do. So I'll be right back with you. Well, I've used olive oil added to my pan here. It's about to get hot. I've got the egg. I've added some salt to my uh, corn flour mixture. The plan is that I'm going to dip the mushroom in the egg, then the corn flour. and pop it in here. I've got it on high right now to get my pan hot, but I won't leave it on there very much longer. Well, I have my skillet full of them, and it's time to start turning the first ones that I put in. I like them crispy. So my burner is a little bit on the hot side, but I don't want to burn them for sure. An old guy thinks I don't know how to cook except on high. Kick it back just a little bit more. Looks like it's ready to go ahead and turn the rest of them. I'll cook them evenly on the other side. I don't think it'll take 
long to get them done. I've got a paper towel on a plate that I'm going to put them on. They are. Don't they look nice and tasty? I'm going to add a little bit more oil and fry up some fish for lunch. While the fish are frying, I'm going to get old guys. Give us a, a taste test to see what he thinks of these. Bragging on me. Well, you don't. You don't have to brag. You have to tell the truth. <laughs> okay, so. He, uh, old guys came in to eat his lunch, and while the fish is frying, I decided to give him a taste test, so got to see what he thinks. I guess I'm going to eat this lion's mane. I don't think I've ever done it before, and I'll give it a taste test. Well, actually, you did. Last year, I fed you some, but they were pretty waterlogged when I made them last year, and... They were not as good to eat. Okay, so what do you think? Tastes pretty good. Do they taste like button mushrooms or do they taste I, like I don't think they crab taste meat like or they're, they're they're said to taste like crab meat or lobster. I don't know whether it tastes like either one of them or not, but one of the tastes of their own, I think, and they're just pretty good. And you get a spoonful of them and you got something, too. You know, that's the top of it. Good eating. Okay. You've heard it from the horse's mouth. Then I better get up and turn my fish, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by.